I love how he always says transitioning, like the tra- like I haven't already fully transitioned. My bitch tits are fully real. That's true. They are. We've all seen them. Every one of us. They're real. That was and they're during wonderful. the charity stream, and you got to pay if you want to see it. Got to help those kids in Nicaragua. You, you don't understand. That's a he has problem. he has his own little website going on. You have to subscribe, but you know it's well worth it. Anyway, it is. Meanwhile, uh, I'm offering free to see my tits anytime. I'll do it right now, guys. I know right you now. will. I know you will. That's absolutely great. It is Saturday night. Um, the don't get demonetized. Don't get on Twitch. <laughs> this is this is why I only do this like twice a year. Uh, hi guys, it's Bo Inc. Uh, welcome to Saturday night. We are doing a um, a two week special event. Um, these gentlemen and ladies have been um, gracious enough to to uh, play test an offering. I'm doing at Gary Con this year. Uh, it's called um, it, it'll be called on the website. We'll call the Curse of Igville, but we're calling it um, a Return to the Vale. Um, so go with either one you want. No, no worries there, one way or the other. Um, basically, um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a bit of a homage to an old um, S4, which was uh, the Lost Caverns Camp, um, and I'm kind of going back and redoing that, uh, and then positioning it as a Greyhawk type adventure. So 20 years after um, after uh, the events of that of that module, um, basically. Um, what we're doing here for these next two weeks, we'll be running through um, what I'm going to consider probably what I think is going to be day two uh, on the uh, on the, uh, convention. And uh, without further ado, I will introduce, well, I'll have the characters introduced. To my left is Miss Carol. Carol, please tell us uh, who you are and what character you're playing. Hi, I'm Carol. Um, I'm a mini painter and a longtime player, sometimes GM. And I'll be playing uh, Denali, a.k.a. Dooney, who has just come back from the dead, apparently. Cause we no didn't surprise. We finish that, but I was at like 24 hip. It was like at 24 points out of 105. So the GM deemed that I would not have survived. No, you would not <laughs> have survived. No, you would, no, matter of fact, I, you know, you probably... If I were being really fair, you would probably be a vampire right now. <laughs> you yeah. would probably be a little a little spawn, and yeah. your friends would have to put you out of your misery. Yeah. However, um, about that, if the vampires killed her, she would have turned into a vampire, right? That is correct. That is correct. Now, below Kyle, sorry, below Carol, we have Kyle. Kyle, please tell us uh, who you are and who you're playing. I'm Bearded Carol. Um <laughs> Also known as Hairless Kyle. What? No, wait, that's Carol. Um, there's so so many K's. Uh, Hairless though. I'm I'm Kyle. I play a lot. I DM some, and I come up with really amazing ideas because I'm just talented <laughs> like that. And tonight I will be playing um, Horker Brecht. Brecht. The fancy wood elf fighter slash rogue slash 100% charming debonair. <laughs> yes, he is. Very charming debonair. And to my right, we have Mr. Ernie. Ernie, tell us uh, who you are other than your name, Ernie, and who you're playing. Yeah, so uh, my name's Ernie. We got that. And uh, I play on the campaign, uh, the normal campaign that we've been uh, broadcasting on this channel for the last year or so. And tonight I am playing Ethreld, the human fighter um, that has, uh, looks like a hand axe to fight with. Let's yeah. see how this goes. <laughs> thanks, funny thanks, you have a hand yeah. axe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I like that a lot. You're the um, one who made the character. I don't know why you find it so funny. <laughs> because it's funny. It is funny. It's great comedy. <laughs> you have to give me a minute. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, below uh, uh, below Ernie, we have Blake. Blake, um, tell us who you're playing. If you don't make yourself laugh, uh, <laughs> I am this evening. I'm going to be Benny, the Asmar Light Cleric, and this is. Uh, 
this group that I've encountered, I call them my Jets, the jovial ensemble of tireless supporters. And we are here to rid the world of evil. Right, you are there to rid the world of evil, and this is a particularly evil place. So I'll uh, catch us uh, up here real quick. You, uh, you have been tasked by the uh, by the wizard Kellyanne to uh, to go to we this. We did not introduce Chris. We did okay. not introduce Chris. You can just forget me. <laughs> <laughs> I introduced Hello. myself. I waved. We're good. <laughs> no, sorry. Below me. Yes, that's right. It's Chris. He's not important. I'm not important. I'm, I'm from Canada. I, I'm important. the odd man out. Uh, I'm playing Fleming, a mountain dwarf fighter. Um. I also paint minis. I stream, Yay. and uh, yeah, we'll see how how this goes. At least this one, I shouldn't. I'm not as squishy as what I usually play. Or you normally are quite squishy. Uh, your player is quite squishy. So, um, sorry about that, Chris. Uh, yes, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> totally, totally. Just, I uh, just went right down the list and skipped. You. I don't know how I did that, but um, I'll catch us up a little bit from last time, so we understand the story is. Um, the story was you were hired by uh, by a powerful wizard to find out what happened to this uh, village of gnomes high up in the mountains that had kind of gone un, un, undiscovered for a long, long time. Um, it's kind of off the beaten trade path, but uh, after um, the village of gnomes befriended um, Hockerbrecht and Fleming on their last trip into the uh, into the caverns. Um, they established trade relations. They established relations with the outside world. Um, got to be good friends with the wizard that hired you here. And then about a week ago, word went quiet, completely quiet. No word, no coming in, no coming out. Of course, the danger is is that um, you know, in you know, because the gnomes helped um, uh, twenty years ago defeat this terrible evil, that eventually some type of retribution would be coming. Took 20 years, but now the retribution has happened. Y'all got into the um, uh, village, were able to uh, root out the uh, the uh, basic uh, theme that it was overrun by a group of undead, uh, led by a vampire uh, and, and her minions. Um, uh, the majority of the gnomes were killed from what they could tell. Uh, but what you know right now is after defeating uh, a very powerful white, that it was kind of like named Uvek the Dread, uh, that Denali was killed, but then raised by, back by uh, Benny. After five days of rest to get everyone's um, feet back underneath them to regain their spells and to get everyone back at 100% strength, um, found out that, uh, that there's an underground portion of this village where the chieftain lives, where the chieftain's family lives, where some of the higher ranking officials within the within the gnome village live as well, as well as the various servants and family and such as that. Um, they're afraid that um, that the that the chieftain may be captured or tortured or killed. Um, so you've now been uh, um, been tasked to go into the underground portion of the lair and um, discover what happened to the rest of the uh, of the gnomes to liberate uh, or free the chieftain and of course find out what happened to the rest of the uh, of the uh, you know wives and basically you know the, the the women and children you know ran into the lair for supposed protection and so some of the more vulnerable um, citizens and denizens of the uh, of the village are in that uh, are in the underground portion that they call just gnome lair. That's what they call it, a lair of like a hole of, uh, full of gnomes. And you did get a map to it. They uh, The gnomes that, that had survived the attack and have been back in the village for the past five days did kind of write you a little map, kind of sketching the areas uh, to where they, uh, to where, um, you know, at least what it looked like before the invasion. So you have that going for you. So you do have a general idea of, of what's, what's down there. Uh, and with that, uh, we will pick up where we left off. Um, all five of you are in good health and fairly good spirits, uh, although your, your understanding um, uh, what your task is to do, basically standing in front of about a 10-foot hole in the ground that tends to go about um, 10 feet high ceilings. It seems to go about 50 feet. Of course, you have the map there to generally understand where you're going. What would you all like to do first? Go back home because why the hell do I want to come back on on this considering what happened? 
Because we have Benny. I shall dive in. It's okay. fine. It's needed. It is very much needed. I will go along. All right. So okay. what? Are we okay. So it's about uh, as you have as you have the map there. You know, it's about uh, about um, ten feet wide, uh, fifty feet long. It um, turns back up to the north uh, and about another forty feet. Then it opens up into into a room about maybe fifty feet by eighty feet. Fifty feet. Uh, to one side to the next, or one side to the next, and about 80 feet long in front of you. You see a couple of beds, you know, that um, look like they're not really nice beds, but just um, beds that have been turned over, um, you know, a couple of beds that have been, um, you know, fluffed up pretty bad. You can tell that some, some type of battle and commotion took place here. You don't see any bodies you see a bit of blood at the very, very end of the hallway. Okay, so sorry, all right, sorry, at the end of the room, there are two doors going off to the north, one door to the south, and an open area um, about 30 feet wide, uh, as you can see what the map kind of goes into. It's one room leading into a larger room where um, you know the light is fairly decent. There's still some torches on the wall, flickering and such as that. You do notice it is very, very cool very cold. It's wintertime. You're fairly high up in the mountains um, and it's bitterly cold. Um, you know, the, the torches that are there don't seem to be getting, you know, giving off any light. Uh, and it's very, very quiet. The only thing you can hear, you know, kind of a little bit in the background, you can hear what sounds like to be scratching sounds like, like, just like, you know, I don't want to say like, like claws on um on a chalkboard, but like maybe just scratching on the walls just a little bit, or scratching on like a wooden post or something like that. Very very faint. Like something's faint. trying to get out. Like something's trying to get out or something. Yeah, like maybe maybe something something is something is trying to get, and it's coming from that 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 far room that is connected to this entrance room here. You can see. What the note says this that you that you see this area is where where the um um visitors have to sleep uh unless they're honored guests. So if you have visitors and you can tell these are normal size beds, they're not gnome size beds, they're normal size beds. Um, you know, so this is where if you're a traveling group, um, you know, wanting to waiting for an audience to see the chieftain, you would probably stay here, you know, not be allowed to really go any further. Uh, the doors leaving here are iron doors. They're not barred or locked that you can tell, but you can see that they could be locked from the other side. Um, so this is a way to basically keep people in here while they're waiting to meet the, the uh, chieftain. That's what the other gnomes explained. Uh, and like I said, got two doors to the north, one to the south, and an open area, 80 feet, kind of to your southeast, I suppose, where you hear this faint, faint scratching and the very profound smell of blood. So, well, Dunny, your scouts go scout <laughs> out. You want me to go look? God, yeah. Obviously. I, I, will, I, will, I will. I will. I will. I will go. I will. Go. I, will I will. I will. rest for a shirt, and I will investigate the scratching. Oh no, it's fine. Can't okay. have you getting hurt again, Snowflake. E I'll be trying to be quiet, so I'm going to stealth my way over there. You want okay. yeah, you check over the scratching door and nothing else, right? Right. The it's the scratching isn't coming from the door. It's coming from the room that's attached to this room. Okay. Well, so guys, do you want? I mean, we could. I could open the door and you know hide myself. Because there's no doorway. It's just an opening. Door. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's just an opening. There's no doorway. It's just no. It's a oh. thirty feet wide opening. I'm sorry. Um, all right, I'm gonna go. I uh, will make a stealth check, and that's. I, 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 I say, hang on, hang on. What? And then I tap your forehead, and now you have resistance. Resistance to what? Everything. Uh, you can roll a d4 and add that number to any saving throw. Oh, okay, cool. And Hawker Brecker will come up to you and lay a hand on you. Don't <laughs> die. Come back and tell us what's wrong. And you can now. <laughs> Oh, Rest Christ. assured that Hawker Breck doesn't really care about you because he was pretty sarcastic <laughs> about that. 
but he also, you know, wants to know what the hell is going on. So, shoot. All right, so that's a uh, twenty-four stealth. Okay. All right. You're you're able to really very quietly, you know, work your way into this room. Um, and like I said, there's still a couple of torches on the wall. This is about an 80 foot square foot square, 80 foot by 80 foot square with a red velvet curtain along the far wall. Okay. Red okay. velvet. The entire room is basically covered in blood. Just uh, awful. This is where you think a lot of these little gnomes made their last stand. One of the more gruesome sights to the south, you see barricades of furniture, uh, barricades of tables, chairs, lamps, whatever they could. Quite a few of the gnomes, especially some of the younger ones, are still, you know, they're, well, they're not on this plane anymore, but they were clutching each other the best they could to hold off the inevitable while um, other adult gnomes were in front of them, um, defending them the best they can. None of them have their heads, and all of the youngest ones don't look like they have any blood inside them at all. Lovely. Uh, so not I exactly a very nice scene. A very, very gruesome, grisly scene. Do I see what's scratching, making the scratching noise? Um, it seems to not coming from any particular direction. Um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of all echoing from all different areas. You can give me a roll to see if you can be a little bit more precise. Uh, uh, which one perception, whatever you want, either perception or investigation. <laughs> Six of one half dozen, another, uh, it's only a 10. 10. Yeah. It's, it's, you're pretty sure that it's coming from these little areas of wood that have been, you know, toppled over and made into makeshift barricades. But the minute that you see that it's coming from one, you, you, you kind of hear it coming from another one. And then as you kind of walk over to that direction or change your focus to that direction, to that area, you see it further away and it's, and it's kind of coming from there. So it's really an indeterminate location. Now, where are all the rest of you? This is something I need to know. No, they're still back in the other room. They're still back in the other room. Okay. I will happily stealth right after her to see. Oh. I will. I, I, actually, I was going to walk out and tell you what I saw. Hello, what do you see in there? I'd be don't honest, I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I was coming out to tell you, so I say, oh my gosh, that place is horrible. This is just so sad. It's where all the gnomes died. So and there's no it, gnomes left? There's no living ones that I can find in there. There are heads that are gone and blood. Did you find the They're, chieftain? I didn't go in very far. I can hear that scratching, but I can't exactly figure out where it's coming from. Maybe from one of the piles or something. There are survivors scratching? I go after it. Yeah, let's go. We, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else is in there, but that's what I saw from the doorway. Okay, so, so yeah, it, uh, I'll, I'll read the description here that, that I have um, um, on the southern end of the wall, a pile of gnomish children, some only infants, are still lying here. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> most are still clinging to one another. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, 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 won't, I won't go that. Uh, that makes it look too difficult. So, uh, as, you, as you kind of turn in, kind of leave the general area, Carol, to, um, to um, um, inform the, the rest you. of your party. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. So as you, uh, as you kind of step back a little bit, you're still in the, still hiding in the shadows really well. Um, yeah. As you step back into the other room to inform your, your compatriots what happened, you hear this voice you know, kind of calling out. Um, and it's, again, it's not from a non-determinate location, just kind of in a very female and an almost, almost seductive type of voice saying, do you see what you made me do? Oh, I had to drain these little ones myself personally, and I shall do the same to you. And right about that moment, you see from the bodies of these fallen gnomes, 
four dark shapes rise up with cold blue eyes uh, and a lot of just just cold, deathly energy coming out their way. Let's have everyone please roll. Did I paint Initiative. these? Initiative. Yes, you did paint these, as a matter of fact. In fact, these got a lot of, these got a lot of love, too. I have a 16. Oh! Uh, I rolled a nine, uh, ten, sorry. Twenty-four. Dirty twenty. Uh, twelve. Filthy twenty. Dirty, dirty twenty. F my dice. They hate me. I don't know why. Fleming, what did you roll? Chris. Chris. Uh, ten. What did you? Ten. (laughs) Never mind, man. That's so bad. And uh, Ernie, what did you roll? 24. Uh, Yeah, so you will most certainly have the... um... You see four... um, Well, you can't really see them, but you can hear this this moaning and waning and wailing sound coming forward. You recognize these are the sounds that Wraith makes, um, and they're kind of about, um, <laughs> even in the, uh, the light that you have, the, the darkness and the coldness emanating from this area is about 60 feet away and kind of to your right, so you don't have strict visibility on them right now, but the keening and wailing that can be heard from these four creatures uh, is unmistakable. So you're at the top of the order, um, um, Ethereal. What would you like ruling? to do? Can I get a quick ruling before we start? Yes, you may. I was before the voice and the resurrection started. I was trying to charge past Dunny. That's fine. You're right next to her. No problem. Okay. Ethereal, what would you like to do? So, am I still back in the area with all the beds, or did we all, as a group, move into the throne room area? You're about maybe 10 feet away from that throne room area. You don't have specific visibility over them, but within one turn, you can get visibility quite easily. Okay, but I do know that there's likely an evil creature in that room. You can hear them, yes. You can hear them. Do I have a clear way to charge in? Yes, you do. But, um, you know, use my movement to get in there? Yes, you do. You're not impeded in any way. Cool. Well, then I'll try and close the distance with my movement. Okay. Uh, now do I have sight? Of... Yes, you do. Yes, you do have sight. You only had to move about maybe five feet to get around the corner to where you could see them. So yes. Okay, cool. Then the nearest one I'm gonna attack with my magical hand axe, and I get two attacks. Okay. Okay. Cool. okay. And uh, let's see. I get got an eighteen and a twenty-one to hit. Okay. That will most certainly hit them. No problem there at all. Okay, so let me do damage. That is eight on the first attack and 12 on the second. So 20 magical damage. Okay. And that's my turn. Okay, and the wraith right in front of you will also will also target you. Uh, he holds out his hand, and you feel this cold bit of energy uh, move its way, and it does a 18 hits you. No, it misses. AC 20. Okay. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, the, uh, cold, the cold hand glides past you a little bit, and you just barely dodge out of the way uh, as, uh, as it as it as it moves past, sorry. It, I, I do have a problem here because I'm, um, I'm looking off to my left in order to pull my stats, and that's not really very smart because that moves me off of the microphone. So I may actually change that if you'll give me a couple of seconds. That's fine. So while, while he does that, check, is resistance half damage? Yeah. I'll go get some water. I'll be right okay, back. Okay, cool. Yeah, resist, as far as I remember, is half damage. Cool. Yeah, I, looks like I have resistance to cold damage. Hey, hey what are you going to 
Because I don't seem to have of speed. So I kind of put like I have DD on, but we don't have crossbows of speed in there. What does speed give you? Anybody know? An extra attack on your bonus. I, I think it basically gives you like an extra attack. Oh, really? What are you talking about? Crossbow the, speed. What does the speed portion do? Maybe it lets you shoot twice if you have two attacks. Yeah, when I, when I when I remember, um, it um, you your bonus action you can you can shoot it again, but with full, but, but with uh, full modifiers. So so you don't. Oh. So right. uh, that that that's what I believe, and and that's it what I'm going to rule. It doubles the rate of fire. So Basically, yeah. To get two attacks around instead of one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frank, uh, are we okay with the camera after my slide adjustments? Yep. Okay, good. Let me move my power cord one sec. <laughs> what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about, Frank. I, I dropped that on Tuesday like a bomb. Okay, okay, so what this says specifically, Carol, is it allows you to use your movement as an extra attack. Oh, okay. So sit down. Move fire. Back. Okay, so uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll be a little bit better. I have my stats directly in front of me, uh, so that's nice. So there are uh, another wraith that's not quite where you're at, Ethereld. But uh, it's about maybe 20 feet behind. Holds up his right hand. You <coughs> see these two, two specters rise from the bodies of two of the fallen, uh, two of the fallen gnomish infants. Oh, oh. oh. Again, man. <laughs> What's everyone's <laughs> hatred against gnomes, guys? Sorry, wrong Wait, character. Maybe they weren't the Hitler I don't give a fuck. <laughs> It's why I love them, honestly. Yeah, they're if only they were better painters. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just an awful, awful, awful thing that happens. One of those specters has a pretty quick movement, um, and it seems to be tar It seems to be moving in your direction, Ethereal, uh, and then another wraith, uh, also further away. It holds up it its hand. And uh, rises up to two other specters. So now you have four wraiths and four specters. They're little specters. They're not really big ones, but it is a very disquieting thing to see the, um, <coughs> you know, these well, little these I little things only rise up. Gnomus children are like a foot and a half tall. So there's these like four foot and a half tall specters. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> they're tiny little buggers. <laughs> Poor guys, um, Hawkerbrecht, it is your turn. Um, that room is full of blood, and I don't want to get it on my boots. Don't so you have I will. Patient Hargabrek. Of course I do, but I still don't want to get blood on my boots. You just cleaned it off after. <laughs> I'm going to shoot the wraith that is up next to Ethreld, uh, which is a certain uh, number. Uh, 26. That hits. And 29. That will hit as well. A longbow is a D8. And let's throw some sneak attack damage on there. Hmm. Uh, 9, 15, 14 non-magical damage piercing. Because I'm fairly certain that actually makes a difference. And 12 on top of that. So how much non-magical piercing? Oh, damn you. 12 and 15. So that's 6 and 15 is 21. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you do notice that the piercing damage does tend to kind of go through it a little bit. Does some damage, but not exactly with the same, uh, with the same um, veracity that you would, or the same effectiveness that you would, that you would hope it would. It seems to have some type of Resistance to straight piercing damage. I turn to Fleming and I say, Fleming, be careful. 
They seem to be resistant to non-magical damage. Let the other ones die first. My sword is magical. I fear nothing. That's, yeah. that's your buddy for you. Benny, your turn. Uh, I shall tap my shield and cast light on it. Uh, so I have now radi- this room is now full of bright light. Uh, okay. which, I, which I'm going to infer is going to somehow impede these shadow creatures' movements. Uh, and I am going to uh, turn to Ethelred and I shall give him a shield of faith. What does that okay. do? You get plus two to your AC for the next 10 minutes. Woo! Ethel Hi. has a 22 AC. AC 22 beast. Love it. And, okay. and I shall center myself, attempt to position myself so that I could intercept as many things trying to attack anyone behind me. Now, you notice that it takes a little while for these newly raised specters to really do anything. They're still kind of acquiring their targets and acquiring who they are and trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. Um, and there are four of them. Basically, you have one for each one of you is uh, is uh, coming uh, coming for you, except for you, Harkerbrecht. No, no, I'm sorry, sorry, not Harkerbrecht. Um, who's the one that casts the uh, light on the on their shield, Benny? Benny, yeah. They none none of the uh, specters are going after you, right? So uh, they they are somewhat averse to that light. They have some sensitivity to light. So so you are you are correct in that. Um, they're avoiding the ones. Uh, and it does seem uh, that uh, Etherald and Dunny are the ones that they seem to have their eyes most yeah. on. And then I would like to essentially, with my movement, position myself to uh, deflect their trajectories. Protect the okay. weak one. I'm fine. <laughs> Protect the weak one. All right. So uh, as the specters are acquiring targets, and figuring out who they want to go to, we'll go to the next in initiative order, which is Dunley. Your turn. Um, all right, so there is one, there's something in combat with, um, what's his name, Ephra, Ephra, I want to call him Ethereal, <laughs> Ephraim, whatever, there's one in combat with him, right? That's true, there is. Peak attack, and so I'll use my shiny new crossbow. Okay. And take two attacks against it. It's plus two as well, so make sure to have plus yeah, two. Yeah, that, that I've got the plus two figured in, it's just that I didn't have the speed figured in. For some okay. reason, it happened. So the lowest of those rolls was a 20. Woo. Well, it hit, absolutely. And so you're going to get full damage because it's, it's, it's magic. All right, yep. Yeah. I was going to say I can do full damage and I get sneaky attack, which is 5d6. And the normal damage is what? So 2d8 plus 5d6. I think this bow is going to work out much better for me. All right, so that's. Six, uh, six, 12, 15, 20, 20, 23, 24, plus, let's see, plus 24 plus 6 is 30, plus 36 points of damage. Okay, he is hurt. He's hurt. <clears throat> He's wailing back, and those cold, cold blue eyes are just, uh, uh, are not happy at this at all. <clears throat> he's looking a little at uh, at a Udunny as well, uh, um, but he's sure. he's he's pretty sure that the specters are going to be enough to, uh, as these little cold hands are starting to reach out towards you with their little their little red eyes, beady red eyes, are pouring right into you. <clears throat> and with that, we'll go to Fleming. Your turn, Fleming. Yes, yeah, I I will go stand aside, everybody. I'm going to take care of this. And I run in and attack the one that's near Ethril. Okay. Uh, so with my magical battle axe, hold on, let me go back to my thing here. Uh, that'll be a 24 to hit. That will hit. Uh-huh. Where's my D8? Can't find it. Where is it? There you go. 
Oh, that was a D10, not a D8. Dumbass. Uh, that'll work. Uh, that'd be 11 slashing from a magical sword. Okay. You only get one attack? I thought you got two as a fighter. Uh, yes. So let's do that again. No, you can uh, that'll be a 29 to hit. Also hit. And... 11 slashing again from the magical sword. 11 slashing again. Very good. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, pretty hurt. You've done a total of about 88 hit points of damage to this one. It's still up, but it's uh but it's but it's not doing well. The last wraith in the corner there also Ray takes his hand and raises two more little specters. So now you have four wraiths and six specters total. Okay? And each one can raise two, um, and uh, they seem after that uh, that they're not going to uh, to continue to raise any more. The one Ethereal has is engaged in combat, thus it's not going to raise any. It's very engaged with you. So we will then start off the top of the order with you, Ethereal. All righty. Second round. I'm going to swing at mine again. And that is a modified 20 and a 17. Both hit. Both hit. All right. Damage with my magical weapon now. Uh, three plus six is nine. Plus 12, 21 damage. That will that will take him out. 21 damage will, will actually take him out. Woo! We got one down. Yeah. The one right next to it uh, is going to glide over to you, Ethereal, as well. It does not. It does not move from uh, from that. It kind of comes in to join its friend, and we'll take uh, we'll take one we'll take one hit at you. AC twenty. Yeah, AC twenty two, and that was a terrible, terrible roll uh you're going to get you're going to get a uh, a, a free attack at it as it um fails horribly and leaves itself exposed you'll get a uh if you wish to take it a reaction to get another attack uh yeah let's do that and that's a nat 20 <laughs> okay Okay, he rolled two nat ones, so that's why I'm giving you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fucked that guy up. How, how do you want to do nat 20? Full damage? Uh, just um, um, you can roll um, uh, double all your damage dice. Double all damage? Cool, yeah, that's the dice. The dice. Yeah. So that would be 24 damage. Okay. These guys are not... These guys are not doing a great job attacking. I don't really know why. Because your dice suck. Your dice don't like you? Well, they obviously don't like me. So the specter, um, the newly raised specter, um, will come up and it will also come against Ethereal. The, the one that you um, um, just hit, this seems to be its, its master. Cool. A uh, 13 will not hit you. No. Nope. The other Wraith moves next to last one in our initial order. So that is going to be, uh, who is the one that, that barged in and said, don't worry, guys, I'll take care of everything. That was you. Yes. He, was. He's right next was. to me, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh so wait, I get. I already used my reaction this turn. Never mind. I get opportunity attack too. Oh, yeah, though, that's if they come out of my reach. Never mind. Never mind. Right. I thought in I had a sentinel your reach. thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, any of your reach isn't going to do anything. What is your armor class? Uh, 20. Okay. That is going to hit you. <laughs> and that will do 28 points of damage. Give me a, a constitution saving throw, please. Con save. Uh, 25. 
Okay, so uh, it does does just 28 hit points of damage, but it's not permanent. It, in other okay. words, it doesn't it doesn't reduce from your from your hit points. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's you do feel the very strong cold chill, but it seems to be it seems to be a combination of cold and necrotic damage. Do you have any resistance to cold? Uh, no, just poison. Just poison. Okay, so um um. It's it's a pretty some pretty nasty feeling, but uh, but you feel like you shook off the worst of the permanent effects. Puckerbeck, your turn. Um, since Fleming got hurt, I'll get my boots dirty. And I'll stand next to him, and I will say color spray. <laughs> and so I think I already decided that this is probably one of those spells that. Hawker Brecker should not have for your thing. Well, you said that you corrected it. I made corrections, and then I said to myself, you know what? Rolling 10 die and adding that all up in the middle of a one-shot is a terrible idea. I I see. that. Huh? I roll like 10 die in damage. Uh, yeah, shush. No one is talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10, 20, 25, 29, uh, 40 um, HP worth. Uh, so directing at the one in front of Fleming. If they have 40, 40 hit points or lower, that one's blinded, and then it goes subtract whatever HP it has, so on and so forth. It's it like the sleep than, spell. Yeah, yeah. It um it, it it's not blinded, but it uh but 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 it will take the uh it, it will take the damage. It's not damage. It's not damage? It is not damage. Nah. Yeah. Shoot. Damn it. Oh well. So so it it looks at the pretty lights and goes ah, ah shit, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and I will disengage and step behind Plevin. Like, nope, that didn't work. Okay. Be my shield, dwarf. <laughs> okay. I, I got to see what the rest of these guys Why aren't right here. Yep. Okay. So now one of the specters. Newly raised specter is going to come at uh, at you, Hawker Brex. No. Doesn't have to. Now, what is your armor class? Fifteen. That will hit you, and it will. Is do... it a twenty or lower? Yes, it is. It's I would like to cast shield. Okay. So as a reaction, you may cast shield. Thank you. And the uh, the um, damage is is negated. Uh, it did not hit at the very moment that it was about to do damage. It just well, it just didn't. Let's just yeah. put it that way. The other specter that uh, was raised up is going to come after uh, is going to come after Fleming. And this is terribly past me. Um, yes, well, not really. No, no, okay. it's, it's hard for me to get where they're at. Some of them will here in a second, though. Um, Benny, it's, it's your turn. Oh, okay. Uh, the rates are on the far side of the room, essentially, correct? The wraiths have moved up now, and and the wraiths are kind of. You see, the thing is, Ethereld is a little bit in front of you. Dooney's a little bit behind Ethereld, and you're next to Dooney. And then Hockerbrecht is kind of is kind of uh, what Fleming is basically. Fleming and Ethereld, the two fighters, are up front. Okay. Okay. Then I don't, behind, I don't like that. I want to be up front. I'm going okay. to brush into one of these wraiths that seems okay. to be it in in trying to watch the uh the minions 
Yeah, one is on um, Ethereld and one is on Fleming. Which one would you like to get up next to? Uh, I am confident that I've already boosted Ethelred. I shall go after the one on Fleming. Okay. Uh, and I shall uh, attack with my staff of striking. And that's going to be a 24 to hit. That will, that will hit. Uh, I'm going, to, it's going to take seven damage from this staff. It's a staff of striking, so it counts as magical, correct? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's seven bludgeoning, but magical bludgeoning. Uh, I can do an additional D8 of bludgeoning uh, as a divine strike, as a free trait. Right. So that's another seven. Uh, okay. And... I am a war priest, so I'm going to do that one more time. Okay. Uh, that's a uh, 17. Okay. So that is Does that 15 hit? plus 17. Uh, it's 17 it's hits, a, yes. It's a 17 to hit. Yes, 17 okay. hits. Uh, that's 10 more damage, a magical okay. bludgeon, uh, and my divine strike does an additional... Another five, and fuck it, let's throw three charges from the staff into that son bitch, which is another three D6. Okay. Um, that's going to be 13. Okay. That is a good amount of damage. Uh, I think a total of 43 if I if I added up all that. Correct. That sounds correct, yes. Yeah, 43, and it's 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 wobbly a little bit. That was a good. That was a good strike. You, you it's still pretty healthy, but uh, Fleming is uh, is going to be a little bit happy uh, and, to, uh, and, to hear that. Uh, no, I take that back. None of that was radiant. Ah. Mm. Well, it was it was all magical, but none of it was it was specifically radiant. It, it would yeah, it wouldn't have done anything extra, you know. So. Um, it, it's not a regenerating creature that would have been prevented it, for instance, from being able to regenerate next. Time. I, I didn't know if they had vulnerability or not. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that's 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 a fair point. Some do, some do. That's a fair point. So now we have. Um, let me think. No, that one never got raised. That one never got raised. And now we do have a little bit more. We have two more specters. Okay, and they're going to go after um, Dunley. Sure. Okay. Does a 12 hit you? Nope. The dice are not with me. Nope. It's fair. Uh, another specter has come back up on um, specter number. Let's come back on Ethereal. This one now does have to move a little bit past you. Okay? And it decides not to. That bright light, it has an aversion to light. Uh, so it instead kind of moves away and is trying to plot right. It wants to get to you, Ethereal, but that, that light in the shield is, uh, is kind of preventing it from doing that. Donnelly, your turn. All right, so as a bonus action, I want to disengage and get slightly behind uh, our the Benny with the bright light. And okay. uh, I want to shoot. Got two wraiths up front, one on Ethereld, yep. one on Fleming and Benny. And the uh, inspectors are kind of flying around. I'm going to want an F, F uh, on F. I'm just going to call him F because I'm going to butcher the name. <laughs> and I will take two shots. Okay. So that was a bonus action to move. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Five and five. That's great. So that's only that's only a 15. That hits. These guys are not that they, they don't have the strongest, their natural armor class is like 13, very low. Oh god. All right, good. They're glad to know five and five will hit. So since they're in combat, that sneak wow, I rolled two ones in the D8s. Uh, let's see, but I rolled 10 sneak attack damage to good. 10, 15, 19, 
21 and 6, 27, uh, 33, uh, 33. 33. Yep. Real quick, Carol, as a point of reference, your resistance faded when I cast Shield of Faith on uh, Bernie. Oh, it's fine. They haven't hit me anyway, so I haven't really had to worry about it. <laughs> Fleming, your turn. Chris. So that okay, That's so, you, yeah, yeah, I got it. You got you got um, one in front of you. Okay. One, one wraith in front of you, and the specters are flitting and flitting out kind of trying to avoid the light. They're moving in, striking where they can, and then trying to kind of move away from the light on that, uh, that's, that, that's the castle of the shield for Benny. I'm gonna the do- The are not paying the light any mind. They don't care. I'm gonna do two attacks with my battle ax. Uh, so that is a 19 and a 27 to hit. 19 and a 27. To hit. Both of those hit. 19 okay. and 27, both hit. Uh, so that is 21 damage from the magical battle axe. And then I will use one of my superiority dice and okay. use my hand crossbow. And that is an eight, so I imagine that misses. <laughs> uh, is that a dirty says, eight? Before he, says, before he says, that's now an 18. Nice. That's uh, a hit. Okay. Uh, so that is five piercing damage, just regular piercing damage. Oh, well, great. Well, I mean, every little bit helps, right? Well, that's an awful little bit. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. It is enough, however, to draw a little bit of attention as uh, as the last wraith, um, the one that was kind of was kind of sitting in the back, is now going to move right next to you, um, Fleming and Benny, and see which one of you it's going to go for. It's going to go for Fleming. And I just can't seem to roll to save my life. Does a 13 hit you? No, sir. Man, awful, awful rolling of the die here tonight. Ethereld, your turn. Round three. Woo! All right. Uh, so I assume there's still the one on me? There is still the one on you. All right. I'm going to swing at it. And a 28 and a 25 to hit. Those both so hit. Both damage hit. Damage is seven plus... 11, 18 magical damage. That is pretty good. And who's right next to me right now? Um, you know, Fleming and Benny are, are, are pretty close. There's about, you know, good combat spacing in between you, so you can both, you know, uh, swing quite freely. Okay. Um, but uh, they have two wraiths, and like I said, the specters aren't really crowding around anyone. They're kind of coming in and then coming out and coming in and coming out like that. They're, they're acting as specters do, kind of flitting around the place. Okay. So the one wraith that's in front of you is uh, is going to attack you again. And uh, let's see if I can roll better than, than five. Sentences. I can't. That's a two. That's awful. Oh, God. It's not a one. Just My really, roll. really. I know. I know. It's just, it's just not rolling very well at all. Um, Number four, so a specter is going to try to attack Dunley. Dunley, a 22. That one will hit you. Yeah, that, well, yeah that'll hit. Yeah, kill him. Wait, what? No, I'm hey. sorry. I forgot where I was. I that guess? does 17 necrotic damage. Oh. I'm going to use my uh, I'm gonna use my reaction to okay. any dodge. I'll take half that. So 17... So that's eight, eight or seven. You're right, eight. eight. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a reaction, Carol, or is that just a feature? That's a, a reaction. Re oh, it is. Okay. It's a reaction. Yeah. The evasion is the. Okay. Give me a give me a Constitution saving throw, please. Oh, Donnie? goody! 
Because my retage rolls are as good as yours. Dunny! Dunny! Dunny, make a save! Which, which flavor was it? Constitution. That jovial ensemble of teaming support. No, it's not terrible. It's 13. All right, that's fine. You made it. You feel, again, that, that, that bit of a cold bite, uh, you know, but it you're able to shake it off. You're able right. to shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> now, the wraith in front of uh, Fleming. Who is he gonna I'm go going for? to Flip? throw out my shield as a reaction so you have disadvantage on his attack. Okay. Nice. Six, that is going to go after Fleming. Changing my dice doesn't help. Does a 12 hit you? <laughs> no, uh, sir. Fleming. No. Lord. Parker Beck, your turn. All right. Um, Wraith or Spectre on me? No. The, um, the, the, there's two Wraiths on in Fleming and Benny, and there's mm -hmm. one Wraith on Ethereld. And again, the, uh, the, the specters are flitting and flittering and floating around, but you can decide to target one if, if you so choose. Um, I'm going to play the, the specter on our team, and I'm going to uh, attack uh, one that's specifically on Fleming um, okay. with the sword, which is a 19 to hit. Um, so booming blade. Okay. Um, so that is a D8 and more D8s. Uh, so 12 thunder damage. Um, is that a plus three? Um, eight slashing, magical slashing. Uh, and then I'm going to disengage and move away. And so if that one decides to pursue, it will take uh, more damage. Yeah, if it moves from the area. So how many total? It was eight and seven is what you had? Eight and I thought I had 12. Eight and 12, okay, that's fine, 20, yeah. okay. Yeah, all magic. All right, yeah, it, it, it does quite a bit of damage. It's, it's, it's not gonna follow you up right now. Sure. Um, so now you have uh, the specter that kind of tried to attack you, Benny, but then kind of got pushed away from the light. It's going to try to make another attempt to come at you. Benny. And let's see. it does, and it hits you. With, with what? Uh, just its hand. Just its hand. It's a well, life drain what attack. Did it, what did it roll to hit? A uh, nat 20. Oh, okay. And that 20. And I'm going to where Benny. That will do. Oh, one second. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to move this away so I can see what it did. It didn't roll well. Uh, it only rolled uh, 18 hit points of damage to you. And please give uh, me. I I have an innate resistance to necrotic and radiant. Okay, so then nine. Only did nine nine damage. Nine necrotic. Okay. Okay, the other specter, who's it going to go after now? Uh, it is going to go after... It really likes you, Fleming. The shield of faith is still up. I did that. Bring I didn't it. Know. Shield of Faith is still up. It will try to attack. I like this guy. A little bit better. Uh, not that good. Does a 15 hit you? No. No, it won't. Benny, your turn. So we've only really taken down one of these things, haven't we? Only taken down one. That's correct. But one okay, of them is looking, I'm another one is looking to, pretty, I, I, I another one is looking pretty injured. Weary of this battle, I'm going to position myself in the center of combat, and I am going to release my spirit guardians. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. So the shield of faith does drop for that because that is also concentration, but now any creature that I believe starts its turn within 15 feet of me is going to take 4d6, or is it 8? 
Let me pull it up here real quick. Uh, 48 radiant damage. And I'm just, I'm going to specify not friend or foe, I'm going to specify uh, actually all of the things that are attacking my compatriots. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. And I think that'll we determined last time that my spirit guardians look like really, really fat cherubs with really saggy diapers that just fling shit. <laughs> I think that was the gist of what you have. Yes. Diapers and poo. I, I do seem to remember the diapers and poo. Dookie. Uh, and that is essentially going to be the my abilities for this round. You're going to cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. Yeah. So, so right now, getting yourself into position in order to do that, um, I'm going to draw a circle. And as of right now, everyone is right now from where you are, the two Spirit Guardians um, basically, sorry, the two wraiths that are kind of uh, on Fleming, right? The ones that you left, those two wraiths are still in your, sorry, your Spirit Guardian. The one that is on Etherel is not, okay? Okay, that's, is, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. Just, just a quick survey to maximize it, as long as that's what it looks like, that's fine. Yeah, you're, you're kind of, um, imagine yourself, if you see the map there, you're kind of uh, at, in a standing line in the transition between the sleep, the guest sleeping quarters and the <clears> audience <throat> hall, okay? You're okay, kind of perfect. in the line there, you've moved further in there, uh, into the throne room audience hall and your spirit guardians are kind of hitting the back of the wraiths. Okay. That's okay. And, and, and I'm essentially blocking anything from entering into the sleeping quarters. Correct. You are, you are blocking anything into the sleeping okay. quarters. That is correct. That's okay. Correct. Okay. So um, with that, then we will move to next in the initiative order, which are uh, one more group of specters that are coming in and coming out. Uh, and before they go, they have to give me a wisdom save. That's true, they do. Uh, and that one will pass it with a 20. Uh, what was your DC? Uh, 15. Okay, okay. That one will that one will pass their wisdom save. So I think you get to roll some damage and it takes half, isn't it? Or is it take uh, correct? Yes. Uh, I think so. Yeah, so half. So it's going to be 4d8 have. So I'm just going to roll 2d8 because I know that's all I have. That's 13. Radiant. 13 radiant. Okay. And it's coming after Dunny. And a 19. So it's just a normal miss. On me? Yeah. yeah. Just a normal miss on you. Yeah. A, a one misses. So. Oh God! Wait, a two is a twenty? No, 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 no. I mean, it rolled a nat one, and then I rolled a d twenty again to see if it's a bad one or just a normal one, and it rolled a nineteen. So that's just a that's just a normal miss. He, he, he house rules it different. He was trying to see if he would get the opportunity to attack like Ernie did. Right, right, right. Hey, cool. Right. Uh, that, I, I'm sorry if I didn't announce that house rule. But that's generally how I do it. Um, and then we have next one is going to be on on Fleming. Did that one make its wisdom save? Uh, it made it 18, so plus two, 19. Okay, so that's another yeah. 13. Right, so 13 damage in order to do something. And like I said, it will come after Fleming. No. Won't hit you. Dunley, your turn. Which is the one that looks really bad? Uh, the one that looks the worst is probably the one on. One second. Probably the one on Fleming right now. The poop flingers will take care of them when they start. All right, fine. Uh, I'll put two attacks on the. <laughs> I will actually. Um, I'm gonna, first, I'm going to disengage and get a range of, of that, um, just so it doesn't bother me when I'm trying to shoot. And I'm going to take two shots at one of the other one of the other ones. I don't know how many. Have, there's still three up. There's still three up. One is pretty is pretty healthy. Pretty much, pretty much uninjured. And then two of them have been injured. One of them's on its last legs. 
All right, so the one that's last week's on Fleming. I'll do the one that's quasi injured on the yep. one that's quasi injured, and they're all in combat, so they're all yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna. Oh, that's finally some freaking good rolls. That's uh, that that's gonna because that's seventeen and sixteen on the die. So twenty-seven. Yeah, that'll hit. Six. Woo! Both times. Twenty-six. Yeah, twenty-six and twenty-seven. Are the two dice? Okay. No, that's not the damage. That's the two rolls. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, I'm just noting it. Oh, much better. It's, this time, instead of two ones, I rolled a seven and an eight on the two eights. So that is what fifteen. Oh, sneak attack isn't as good. Sixteen, eighteen, uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-six, and twelve is with a twenty-six, thirty-six. 38. 38. 38, that's going to be... Fun. I do like math, actually. At least that's they... good. That's good. That one, now you have two of them that are really close to being, being on their last legs now. Good. Lemon, your turn. You have one in front of you is not happy. And one in front of you is fairly injured. Um, I will go after the fairly injured one. Okay. Um, I'll do my double attack. That is a nat 20 and a 27. So it'd be a 30 nice. and a 27. The nat 20 misses. <laughs> too That's a miss. <laughs> it has a legendary reaction. It chooses to succeed on missing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let's do damage, I assume. Uh, yeah. So double damage on the one that was the nat 20, am I correct? Well, yeah. It, well, the way I like to do if it's 2d6, now it's 4d6. That's, that's the way I normally like to do my... Uh, okay, my yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, where are you? So that'll be... Uh, 16 plus 15, 31 damage with the magical battle axe. 31 damage on that wraith will, I believe that's going to be enough to take it down. Yes, it will. That is most certainly enough to take that wraith down. Okay. Did you have a movement? I mean, you know... Like I said, the, the specters are kind of flittering in and flittering out. Um, and you notice that when you took out that wraith, two of the specters disappeared. Okay. That's interesting. Exodus. So pick and choose. Pick and choose. I uh, try to relay this information to uh, my fellow. Yeah players um i'll stand my ground okay okay the wraith that is in front of you the the wraith that's in front of you that wasn't really too too injured uh is is mad at you uh and will 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 pretty much come right at you as much as he possibly can making a wisdom saving throw yes and he fails his wisdom saving throw uh, Benny, would you please give me a 48 for damage for, uh, for the race? Uh, 18. Again, radiant. Yeah. He takes full damage on that. He has no resistance to radiant whatsoever. But he's I know. I'm just going to keep saying it as a force of habit. No, no, absolutely. I understand. I understand. So I'm gonna find, what, is your, what is your armor class? Fleming? Fleming armor class? 20. 20. 20. Okay. And. Okay, that is a nat 20 that time. So that's a fairly decent amount of damage. That is 67 necrotic damage to you. Oh! Don't fail that. Saving Give me a constitution throw. saving throw, please. Oh, God. Dave. 
Con save is 24. Okay, so you're not that's not gonna come off your max. It's just 67 hit points of damage. 67 hit points of cold and necrotic. Okay. Oh, the damage. I'm hurting. Yeah, I know. Hurting. That, that's 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 a decent amount of damage. But it's like the first time I've rolled a nat 20. You know, I've rolled twos and fives oh. all night. <laughs> Ethereal, your turn. Your pain, Scott. All right. Uh, I'm going to attack the one on me. And uh, 14, does that hit? Yeah, it does. It does. And a nat 20. (laughs) (laughs) So roll the damage on the 14 first. You have uh, the one in front of you. So that's 10 damage for my magical hand axe for the 14. Okay. And then I'm going to double up my dice for the nat 20. Perfect. And that is uh, 20 more damage from my magical hand axe. And that takes that wraith down. Do also the specters disappear? Yes, two specters also disappear. So there's just one wraith and two specters Two specters, yes. Cool. And, um, that is correct. That is correct. I'll still have my shield reaction ready if um, something attacks one of my colleagues that's within melee. Of me. Okay. Okay. Hawkerbrick, your turn. I will go after that last wraith. Okay. Um, with the booming blade. That's a 19. I'm the wrong fighter class. Uh, but that is uh, 16 thunder damage um, plus 11, 27 magical slashing damage on top of that. Five fire damage on top of that. And we decided it was a long sword, so it does not get sneak attack damage. Uh, and then I will use my bonus action to uh, attack again. 27 to hit on that one. So how much damage was you're going really fast you're just giving oh. me five five two three eight seven two 32 was the first batch math, of DM, math come on come on i'm doing all the easy math you do all the easier math <laughs> gotcha. uh all right. so 32 all combined <clears throat> for that first one and then for the second attack that is um eight um 12 um, 17, all magical in some fashion or another. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's he's injured. Uh, you think probably maybe almost almost half, almost half. You know, he, he's looking kind of like how the other ones did, you know, hurt, but not terribly, awfully hurt. Um, and there is, this guy has, it's two specters or the last two specters that are around. Probably two of the smallest little, almost like little baby gnome specters. Kill them with fire. It's depressing. It is depressing. Now, was that your reaction to the baby or the gnome, Benny? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it, it has to get through um, through your spirit guardian. So it's going to fail that. Give me a 48, if you will, please, Blake. Okay, that's going to be 22. 22, that almost kills it. Really, really, really uh, injures it on the way, but it's it's almost driven mad by seeing uh, all this, uh, seeing it, you know, it's, it's, it's buddies being, uh, being whipped out to the nether, and uh, so it's kind of in a crazed sense as it gets to you. And that is not going to be a hit. Benny, your turn. I'm going to kill this son of a bitch. Uh... I'm going to, with my staff of striking, that's a 19 to hit. Okay. Uh, that's going to be 5 plus 4, 9, uh, magical bludgeoning. Uh, and I do an additional D8, which is an additional 7. So that's 16. Okay. Let me know if it's dead. Not quite. Okay, I'm going to burn a few charges through that uh, staff. I'll do 2. Uh, that's nine more. And that will do it. Okay. So I don't have to use a bonus action. That takes out the last wraith and then the uh, 
screaming specters just right before they cast off into the nether, their forms change to more of a peaceful little gnomish child um, released do my, from do my, the curse. Do my, do my cherubs still throw shit at them? No, they stop throwing shit at them and um, probably give a little nod of their head as they peacefully pass to the realm of Garl Glitter Gold and the uh, gnomish gadget land that they that they all inhabit. So um, another deathly still um, descends upon the room that you're in. Flemin is hurt pretty bad. Um, and uh, exits out of this room, you see um, a door to your south and a door to your north. In addition to the other two doors to the north and one door to the south. So total from left to right, three doors to the north and two doors to the south. Uh, and you have a good idea a, that to the north. Free action, my healing hands are going to give Fleming 10 HP back. Thank you. And uh, I will advise you to drink your potions. <laughs> uh. <laughs> drink your potions. I'm not doing you. Well. I'm going to get a quick. Uh, I'm going to get a quick. Um, um, uh, back, I, I gave him back this thing as a free fucking action. What, what more do you want from me? Drink what potions? I guess I have one. Uh, I, I don't know. know. Whichever ones are going to heal you. I've heard you people have such things. I do, but I'm not really done that much damage, so I'm okay. Yeah, I didn't even get hit. That kind I'll of use uh, I'll use my... Well, I guess I can't use a bonus action right now, can I? Yeah, yeah you can. It's just not considered... Yeah, you can you can use anything action bonus action. There's just it doesn't matter the casting time effect. We are out of no, combat. Okay. I will yeah. use my my second win and get twenty more health points. Yes. Oh, and you freed me from telekinesis. Adam show is dead. <laughs> Okay, so um, um, we're out of combat. You know from the maps that the gnomes gave you that generally to the north, you have like the kitchen area and the servants' quarters, um, you know, uh, as well as a large common dining hall that what the gnomes have told you, that's where the servants and the servants' families where they eat. Um, to the south is where the chieftain family lives across a large crevasse, a large across cavern. Some of the more, you know, the dignitaries that come and visit, um, you know, the guest quarters that they have there, which are quite a bit nicer, uh, as well as uh, across the cavern, cavern, that's where the chieftain and his family reside, as well as maybe, you know, the, you know, the chief wizard, chief illusionist. And such uh, I was going to say, but, you see like 12 beds over there, are they Catholic? Yes. Um, yes, they are, Blake. They're Catholic. Catholic gnomes. Oh, <laughs> that is what they are. Catholic they, gnomes. They, it makes sense. Hitler was Catholic. So they hate themselves as much gnomes, as I hate them. Hitler. Every soul is sacred. <laughs> <clears throat> Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is sacred. Great, great movie. Great movie. Um, yeah, I love Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did too. So, what, where, where all would you like to go from here? Um, you know that the chieftain quarter is to the south, but you know to the north as well in the servants' quarters slash kitchen slash common dining hall, there is kind of a little jail type area to where they hold people in, um, in like an incarcerated area. Uh, before everyone starts moving and clamoring around again, can I get a perception check just to, because you say it's very, very still and quiet, just to see if there's anything that permeates that? Sure, give me a roll. Uh, that's a 19 plus two, uh, three, 22. Okay. Um, what you notice is that um, you can't hear anything. 
but to your north, you do feel the air up there is a little bit warmer. Maybe you didn't notice it at first, but there's not much of a draft. Now, 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 that the coldness, now that the coldness of these undead beings has left the area. Yeah, it, it's the coldness of the undead. You, know, you can kind of tell the difference between natural cold and undead cold. And what you're kind of picking up is, is that to the north, it seems to be a little bit warmer. Even, you know, a li- you're picking up a little bit of a warm draft underneath the, uh, you know, doors to the north. A is there, is there just draft. the faintest hint of smoke on the air? No, I wouldn't say smoke. No, not at all. Just radiant warmth. Okay. Straight warmth. No, no, no smoke hint to it at all. Just you know, the oil from torches, but nothing, okay. uh, nothing, nothing like that. Nothing okay. unnatural. Maybe I say nothing to slink off that way. So, Benny, so where would you all like to party? go? All right. <laughs> Split the party. Split the party. Out. Oh, you know what? We got to test splitting the party. It would be wrong if we didn't do that. Why? To help out our friend for his convention. Split the party! Lemon that? and I will go back out the cave. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got this right? <laughs> we'll guard the entrance, make sure no one escapes. <laughs> you know, maybe check out the local pubs. Yeah. Quick, roll the boulder over the entrance. Don't make me pull it. Don't make me pull it. Jesus. <laughs> Wait, Jesus? <laughs> yes. Wait. Yeah, the boulder over the tomb. I, I might be thinking Lazarus. I'm thinking on steroids. It, it works. They're all they're all Jewish funerals. They put everyone in tombs and roll boulders over them. That's just kind of what they do. And then, and then the mothers complain that they're being ignored and they eat wet cigarettes, and it's a wonderful time. Right, right, right. And See, I thought, you know, in a, in a brisket, roll the a good boulders brisket. over them and more of them fit into the grave, saving money. No, no, it's a boulder over the entrance. That's, that's the furnaces, uh, Kyle. That's the up. furnaces. Oh, right, right, right. right. Uh, I need soon. to catch up on too my soon. knowledge history. <laughs> too soon. So what, 60 years too soon, right? It's too soon. All right, all right. Okay, um, as uh, as Benny is able to pass on that information to the party that it's... No, 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 I, I say nothing. Okay, as Benny <laughs> puts this information close to his chest and says nothing to the rest of the party, Burr. what would you all like to do? Uh, does Hawker Breck know what royalty would do if they were attacked? The escape hatch and escape way? There is an escape out of here directly down towards south yes close to the um um chieftain's chambers there is uh there is an escape hatch out to to a sanctuary area they have um that uh that is used for them to flee yes there is there is a sanctuary out uh close to the chieftain's quarters to the southeast of the lair there is okay as you guys know, I've already saved this place once. Well, Fleming and I, it was mostly Fleming and his strong back. Ah, oh, Fleming, you handsome devil, you. But uh, if the royalty were here, they'd probably take the escape hatch that way. So you're suggesting we do the same? I charge I'm off that way. way. It's easier to hold a single hallway than it is a giant maze of a cavern, obviously. Uh- Use your head, Dunny. Thanks, Hawker Breck. I, I charge off that way. I, I don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, you want to go left? La- oh, well. <laughs> Watch out for the trap, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, basically off down towards the left. Uh, sorry. Um, you're, you, you can make your way. Um, Downtown, moving fast. There's a 10 foot corridor, okay? And I'm gonna use um, here a little thing here. Um, Benny, are you keeping your spirit guardians up? Uh, I, I haven't dropped it yet, but people do notice as I, I am, I was serious, I am moving towards that heat. Okay, that's in the opposite direction of where everyone else wants to go. Um, I, I, and I, I wasn't around for their conversation regarding that. Benny! Okay. Oh, it's too late. So 
So Benny, um, through a little door um, that you can peek open, you see in front of you about 20 feet, there's a, um, there's a barricade. Um, again, one of these barricades that you saw. Um, I'm going to have Benny kind of going off to the north here a little bit, and I'm going to have Ethereld and Fleming and Hawkerbrett kind of heading out to the south. Dunny, where where are you going? Oh God! I like like I. All right, so are I'm you are Hawker you following Benny, or are you following Hawkerbrett and Fleming and Ethereld as they kind of go to the south? You know why don't I let a dice decide? Yeah, he has to pay that favor that you owe me. I'll go low for Benny. And I, I mean, Benny did save your life. You know what? Fine. And you know, there it rolled you low. Go. It rolled low, so the dice know. And I have a four. So I will go chase after Benny. Okay. You can see. You can see just the the, the flickering of, the, of these. Shit you see a saggy players. diaper go around the corner. <laughs> I love the fact they're saggy diapers. I mean, the little diapers are going around the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you, um, I'll um, describe well, what uh, what Benny and Dunley see first, and then I'll describe what the rest of you guys see next. So, uh, Benny and Dunny, as you open up the door to your north, you see another little barricade about twenty feet off, and then a large, wide, um, you know, dining hall. I want to say because you can tell. It's a dining hall because there's tables. Um, now, it doesn't seem that this area is as destroyed as the last one. You see a couple of tables, still a little bit of earthenware, uh, pots and plates and things like that. But what you can see about 80 feet away, because again, you still have torches and such as that, you can hear like a crunching sound, like, um, like oh, something is being eaten. Like Did the barricades indicate that something was being kept out or in? Try this was a barricade. You can tell um, there's a one body strung out on the other side. They were trying to prevent people from making it to the north. Um, they were. This was you know to keep people <laughs> out. But, but, but like I said, uh, you, you can hear this crunching sound, uh, I, and there's a little bit more pervasive. About eighty. This is again eighty feet away. A little more pervasive of the warmth as well. I'm, um, I'm, I'm and, and again, again, my spirit. So, ten minutes. Let me know when my ten minutes is up for my spirit guardians. But I'm going to essentially attempt to vault over the barricade. And what? No! Don't. Do, why don't we get the others? There's no time. I hear innocent people being devoured. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go. Donnelly, what are you doing? How far away are the others? About 45 feet to your south. Oh, they can hear me. Hey, guys, we found something, and Benny's not going to stop. Okay, you can see through here, as you open up the door to your south, a set of, like, little winding passageways running down towards the south. Uh, and eventually, um, if you make it down maybe 60 feet, uh, a natural cave that or natural corridor that curves back off to the southeast. Parker Beck, you know that's the direction of the large crevasse to where the chicken and his family live, and also the gnome lair's escape hatch. Do you wish to heed the uh, the uh, calling of your friend, or um, I don't know if she's your friend or not, do you wish to heed the calling of Dunley, uh, saying that they found something, or do you pursue your knowledge that if you continue to head down this path a little bit, um, you're going to pass some of the uh, you know area to the right. That is some of the guest quarters, uh, honored guests and esteemed people, <laughs> not, not the commoners waiting for audiences, but you can make your way straight across this area <laughs> and come to a large chasm that there's a bridge <laughs> over it. Or you can listen to your friend Dunnelly and turn around and head back north. What would you like to do? Parker Beck, Fleming, and Ethereld, what would you like to do? Ethereld, Fleming, you recall that dangerous fight we had not but five days ago. We certainly needed Benny and Dunny's yeah, dead I body I to help. I being a week. Let's I heard go. five days, but... <clears throat> Let, let's go on Hawker Breck to remember if we have to go back, you have to cross that pool of blood again. Oh, God damn it. I pull out a longsword and fly. 
I don't actually care. I just didn't want to get in the fights. <coughs> and the inner murder hobo is just, just, just has to come out. After <laughs> I, 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 I want to continue on. But are, are we rejoining Betty We're and gonna bring it another? Fle- Flemon, I will, of course, follow your lead. I Flemin. think it might be a good idea we don't, you know, split ourselves in case we end up dying from some horrible fate like last time. Mike, it might be- yeah, I think I think strength in numbers, albeit that, you know, I may not require strength in numbers, but I think we have a better chance of survival if we all stay together. You certainly would have made survival a lot a bit easier the last time out, but somehow you weren't with us. He, he was delayed with prostitutes. Apparently. I had crabs. <laughs> I gave it to him so he would not be in any of the fights and I could protect him. Don't ask how I gave it to him, though. It's only for the best uh, with, of with, friends with, with, to with know. Drawn butter and a, and a pair of crackers, right? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Of course. Okay, so... Um, I will spank Ethrold on the backside with the flat of my sword and turn him around. All right, I'll, I'll turn around. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess. Yeah. We'll test it next time. Scott can be prepared for a party split. No, I'm I'm totally prepared for a party split. I have no I problem with prepared. party splits at all. You know no what? Be He's apparently prepared. Let's go ahead and leave him then. <laughs> I throw Fleming over the cataclysm. <laughs> I have been challenged. I have no problem with splitting. We're going the party. to screw him over now. <laughs> Isn't that what we do on this show? Uh, okay, yeah, that's that's true. That is that is kind of what y'all do. So, um, Lemon is going to be right back. That's fine. He probably don't want to see this anyway. So, no, that's okay. So, um, give me a quick dexterity. No, I, this, this, these are no, these are not that high. It's only about two foot high barricade. They can't really stack things that high. But little sons of bitches. So, you're able to easily make it over the barricade, Benny. No problem at all. Um, and you see what is uh, what is the cause of the heat and the cause of the um, the chewing. Uh, you see about maybe eighty feet away from you um, two snake like insect like things. You know, both just radiating heat. Heat is just pouring off these things' body, ah, ah. and they're chomping on and they're chomping on the dead remains of gnomes. Uh, one is slightly bigger than the other, um, and you can give me an arcana check or um, a survival check to see if you recognize what they are. I guess I can try that. Actually, this is on our side. Uh, this is on our side of the. I rolled a natural one, so I can't tell you shit. Uh, I Danny, you want to roll something? Either, but that's a that's a fourteen. Although I'm pretty sure I'm staring at them uh, sitting on my shelf that because I just finished those. You probably are. You probably Carol, are. Carol, you dirty oh. metagamer. Hey! I'm going to go out. Oh, grab them, too, so they can be on camera with me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, if you want to go ahead and grab them, then you can show the rest of the party what they are. So this is what they look like. Yeah. Uh, very, very, they're literally across the room. Well, she gets up, I charge valiantly ahead. <laughs> these are going to be fun to fight, although I said my character probably doesn't know, but it's these, right? It's these yeah. guys? Yeah. yeah. So here's the baby one, because they don't make a baby one, so I had to kind of make... I want that, them to that, that's, that's a great job, Carol. That's a fantastic job. If everyone... I can hear the sarcasm. No, 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 those are awesome. Those are awesome. You patronizing son of a. <laughs> I hope oh, not- but look at Chris. Oh, 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 wow. oh, oh. <laughs> that's fantastic. Shut up. Jen, Jen painted that one. I didn't paint that one. <laughs> of Wait, course. Have- I missed a way. You got one? I had to make no, a no. big. Picture. All right, everyone, whip out your dick. Let's see who's bigger. Okay. Let's, All right. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Scott, did you pay her ahead of time, or do you think you can switch over to have uh, him do? 
<laughs> now I, I I I I always prepay everything. Ah, oh, that's sorry. a shame. Sure. That is a shame. <laughs> Of course, you know, not that I mind. I mean, it's all fair. Yep. So um, <laughs> that, that, that that is what you see. Um, a male, uh, you know, one bigger than the other, obviously. And uh, y'all know these are very odd creatures. You guys haven't spent a lot of time in the mountains, uh, so you probably don't know what these things are, but they are chomping on these little gnomes. And as you charge forward, Benny, they notice you. And uh, kind of snake along their little uh, their little feet, yeah, uh, and and they gotta little, suck. And they uh, they move their way to attack as well. Vinny and Emily, give me a uh, give me initiative roll, please. Street twelve. Thanks. Uh, that is fifteen. Okay, let me write that down. Benny rolled a straight 12, and Dunley rolled a 15. Okay, Dunley, you are up. You are first in the line. Uh, are they, so it moved, so which one? The big one moved up to? Yeah, they're about 80 feet away, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little while before they actually get there. Uh, to be honest I with you. I mean, I won't get sneak attack because unless they can't see me. I didn't uh, really, I suppose. I'm, I'm charging to engage with them. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they would be really hard to hide from these guys as well. They, they, uh, they're very right. sensitive to movement. Right. They, they, they don't seem to have even like normal eyes. They just seem to kind of move where they see movement. Or feel movement. Feel movement, yeah. Oh, I'm going to make Tremors rules. All right, cool. I'm going to make two attacks. I don't know if that's going to hit. Um, and now they've got a real tablet. To so the, are, you, are you attacking the adult or the smaller one? Uh, which one's charging? The one going in front is the bigger one. It's it's the and one moving going, moving to meet. Moving to meet, yeah. Then I'm going after the bigger one. Okay. Um, that would be uh, 17 is the the lowest, and then I have a 28 on the other one. 17 does not hit, a 28 does. All right, cool. I said I can't get sneak attack, which makes me sad panda, but... Yeah, I'm just... sad panda. Oh, that is 13 points, though. That's good. Seven and six. Tis but a flesh. Hold on one second. There's someone at the front door. One second. Oh! <laughs> all right. So we, we all roll crits. We win. Loot. <laughs> so, so I, um, we'll, we'll catch up in like two turns, right? Because he said 45 feet away initially. Oh, no, no, no. He, he has challenged. I say we split the party now. God damn oh, it. Wait, so the no, he wants us to. No, I didn't say I wanted to. No, no, he, he explicitly said, bitches, I'm ready for you guys to split the party. I can handle this shit. Okay, I'm like, let's do that. You're not ready for it, Scott. But <laughs> we're, we're still going south then. If that's the case, if you're following. I am following at this point. All right, we're going south, Scott. We've decided the three of us are south, two of us are north. All right. All right. We, we so were running out of time, so we're speeding up this dungeon crawl. Yes. Okay. <laughs> speeding up the bit here. Okay. So the uh, so the Rimuraz, um, it cannot make it all the way to you in one turn, Benny. Um, it still is about twenty feet away from you, so you can't make it all the way, and thus that's going to give you a chance to close and take an attack if you so choose. So it is your turn, Benny. I shall. I shall close the distance. Uh, what's the time on using an item? Bonus or full action? Depends on the item. Potion. Potion, uh, I'll rule bonus, that's fine. Bonus, okay. That means I get to... Uh, I'm going to big dick and flick the wounds on this thing. With a 20, dirty 20. 
Okay. So it's going to take, I want to say that's <coughs> eight, 8D10. Eight uh, just to double check here. Uh, I love inflicting wounds. Um, Yeah, fifth level, that's going to be 8d10. Of what type of damage? Uh, necrotic. Yeah, that's eight. So, so so how much total? Say that one more time, please. 8, 8d10, which is going to come out to... Uh, 45 total. That is a touch attack. Okay. And one second here. <clears throat> and you get so close to it, um, you take six points of fire damage. Okay. Uh, and then as my bonus action, I drink my potion of invisibility. Okay. Okay. Oh. Screw you, Donny. Well, no, I'm, I'm assuming that my spirit guardians have not gone invisible. They have not gone invisible. No, they have not. I don't think he's leaving. If he is, I'm freaking I'm going to be following him out the door. Uh, I, 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 uh, no, I, I, Follow if, those it's possible, if it's possible to move, to use my movement to position myself where they're both going to start within 15 feet of my position. So that my spirit guardians attack them, I would like to do that. Otherwise, I'd like to essentially stay within melee of this one. Okay, now that's fine. Um, you you do notice that uh, as you make a few positioning moves, um, it doesn't seem to take any effect of your invisibility at all. It's picking up where you're stepping. Whenever you move a little bit, its little head moves with you. Yeah, sneaking dead wasn't going to work for me, so. This is like, ah, shoot. It, it's, it's picking up the vibrations where you're stepping. Every step yeah, you take, yeah, yeah it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's a tremor sense, right? So it can, I, have, yeah. I have a fix for that next round. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to let you know that you notice it. You uh, notice yeah, it as, no, I, as I, you're I, moving, I, as you're stepping, I, I you know. Fix for that next round. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, so the young one is kind of, um, you know, kind of moving in as a bit, not moving as fast. And it seems to be, uh, it moves about maybe 30 feet. Uh, it, it's moving after you, Dunley, uh, into that direction. Thanks. All right. Is it going to, where is it in relation to me? Uh, it is about maybe 30 feet to your left. This okay. is uh, okay. about a 50 foot wide area 80 feet long they both moved but both moved about 40 feet closer to you you close distance um uh benny and then the other one kind of moved around the other set of tables moving towards moving towards dunny now uh let's uh let's join our uh, friends our brave sir robin who uh bravely ran away uh towards the south you find yourself in front of a chasm uh, and a bridge uh there was a bit of a um Oh, I want to say a, um, a barricade on top of the bridge. But again, this is a gnomish barricade. Not really too hard to be able to get around one way or the other. Um, you're able to easily make across um, the, uh, the uh, bridge. I'm trying to kind of accelerate this a little bit so you can kind of see what you guys are going to be in. Um, you are faced with, in front of you, I want to say like... Um, uh, like a, almost like a checkerboard pattern or um, a stair step. Yeah, it, it looks like a stair step pattern. If you're looking down on it, um, you know, like a diagonal set of, you know, you know, 15 foot or 10 foot, um, you know, diagonal wall. Um, but it's not really a wall. It's just 10 feet north, 10 feet west, 10 feet north, 10 feet east, you know, et cetera. But moving in a line like this, it's just like this, you know, stair step, stair step, stair step. The only way around is to go either the northern or the southern way. So would you like to, um, after you make it across the bridge, would you like to skirt around the northern edge 
uh, in order to get into the uh, into the chieftains area or the southern area to get to the chief. I will go the fastest way there. That's probably going to be the the I'm going to say the southern way actually. I'm so charging I'm gonna that you, way. I'm going to have you guys basically charging, um, running on the southern way, and you make it all the way to. Uh, a, uh, Scott, over. I would actually like to go in the northern way. Okay, we're going to split no, I'm the party kidding. Right, sorry. <laughs> split the party in three. Perfect. Um, so you come to a, to, a, um, to a corner where it turns north, and you have a door to your east, or the corridor continues to move uh, to the um, back to, sorry, a door to your west, or the corridor keeps going back over to your east. Um, and I'll leave it there for for your next decision point after I go back up to the north at the top of the uh, top of the initiative order. Dunley, your turn. You have a small a small er remoraz about maybe oh I want to say twenty feet from you. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? Uh, I can freak out, man. So the little one's twenty feet away. Twenty feet away. Now, you, right now, you are not in the spirit guardian protective area. Would you like uh, to move into that area? Um, I guess I can. I don't, I don't know if it's going to help. Um, yeah, I'll get over there to try to lure it, lure it over there. Um, geez. It's only 10 foot to the east, and then you can still, no, you can still fine. make gonna, a full move. I am going to step in there. Okay. I don't like this fight at all. We really need our allies. All right, so I'm going to take two shots because that's going to be my bonus action will be to dash in there. And two shot. Oh, those are good. That is the lower roll was a twenty three. That has no problem hitting at all. Yeah, that's 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 an easy. It just easy sucks hit. that it's not sneak attack. Damn it! Oh, but nope. it's, yeah. Now I got a two and the one in the damage. That's three plus twelve is fifteen points. It's a magic weapon, so. Yeah, so so you're able to do 15 bits of damage. You're out of range of its heat, so you don't suffer any effect from, from getting close to it, okay? All right. Now, the big Rimaraz uh, is in front of Benny at this point, and it is going to... It's going to attack Benny. That is a dirty 24. That does hit. <coughs> okay. Shit. That does, wah. Um, that does 62 points of damage. Um, <laughs> let me think, that is 47 piercing I, and I, 15 I fire. Understand. What was that? 42 piercing and 15 fire. Okay. And I need you to make a strength that, set. That's 50, that's 52, isn't it? Let's see here, wait, 47 plus 15? Oh, 40, 47, okay, yeah. 47 plus 15, yeah. Okay, yep, I'm and fine. Give me, uh, give me a strength saving throw, please. Okay. Uh, that is uh, 16. Okay, you are grappled and restrained as it wraps its uh, legs around you. Oh, hang on. Uh, did it make its wisdom save? Did not. So it needs to make uh, fifteen wisdom. Did you did you maintain concentration on sixty-two hit points? <laughs> well, this is at the start of its turn. That's correct. It is. So give me a damage. Full. Yeah, full damage, uh, 48, what is it? Okay, that's 12 plus eight, 20. 20. <clears throat> okay. All right, okay. So, so so you are grappled and restrained. Your concentration does fall, okay. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Okay, so concentration is down. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. And um, Benny, it is your turn. Okay, and I'm grappled and restrained. 
you're grappled and restrained and you notice that it's that it's starting to open up its mouth very wide okay fucking hell damn it uh, did you get us <coughs> So we took a week, right? We, we took a week, right? Yes, 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 y'all did. With a nine, my mother comes down and smites this creature. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I don't know what that means, but- My divine to... intervention okay. was successful. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So no deep, so- I know that that's a very, 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 very good role. Oh my God, we need uh, it. Let me run up the divine intervention real quick. Divine intervention. Okay. And my, my, my specific plea is to smite this, this terror and to uh, 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 re release me from its uh, captivity. Okay. Uh, roll me um, for damage. Roll me. Um, it will smite and, and release you. Uh, roll me um, 7d12 for damage, please. Okay, so at four, I have 32. Okay. Uh, and the last three are 18. Okay. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's hurt pretty bad. It is, it is hurt pretty bad. But um, um, it, it, it also, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still alive. It, it was a good spike. I'm looking at divine intervention uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty powerful spell. I was gonna say, you know, that's a, that's a fair ruling. Yeah, uh, yeah. And as my bonus action, I'm going to quaff my potion of flying. Okay, that will help. That will help. It won't be able to perceive you as much. Great, so on. Down the ground, yes, that's a big deal. You're invisible. And your uh, because these are potions that don't require concentration. So, right. um, so your potion of invisibility. If you're flying, um, it loses track of you. It it can't feel you on the ground anymore at all. Okay. It just kind of loses where you're at. Now the young Remoraz uh, now closes the distance with a with a dunny. Yeah. No shit. But it's it's not as big. It's not as nasty. It doesn't matter. It's gonna hurt like fucking hell. Does a, a it's it's an eighteen. Does that hit? Oh shit! No. Eighteen doesn't hit you. See, it no, it, it doesn't it, have it doesn't have, it doesn't have the same bonus that the other one gets. It's not nearly as strong. Um, you know, so only an eighteen. Eighteen doesn't hit you. Only gets one attack around. That's it. I we're gonna go for that. Okay. Now the other one comes after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it can't. So, so Hockerbrecht uh, and Hockerbrecht and team, let's move back down to the south. You know that to the left is to where the court illusionist lives. To the right um, is kind of a rounded door. You know, you see a um, 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 the where you know the chieftain's quarter is, and there's a door right in front of you that you know uh, where a laboratory. Um, for the chief illusionist, that's where he kind of, uh, you know, well, he calls himself, you know, a chief illusionist. He's, you, you don't really think he's that good of an illusionist, but he's been able to trick everyone long enough that he's this great powerful thing. He has a laboratory ahead of him. His, um, <clears throat> his friend, sorry, sorry, his uh, sleeping quarters are off to the left and the chieftain's quarters are around uh, around the corridor and then kind of making a quickly U-turn. The escape hatch, as you see, 
would be to keep going past the the um, um, chieftain's corridor and then through a little secret door that you know where it is. So what would you like to do? Would you like to go to the door to your left, the door ahead, or into the chieftain's chambers? Akabrek, tell me where to charge. Well, the illusionist's room is that way. He's not very good, though, because he just uses tape in order to appear like a woman. So I suggest... Don't ask how I know that. I suggest we go to the chieftain's room. Is that, is that perception or investigation? That's sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 you would like to go into the chieftain's room? Uh, yes, yeah. I send Ethereld in first. I charge. I, I kick okay. the door down. Okay, hold on one second. I gotta I gotta take two things out here real quick and put two <laughs> things in. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you really are. Am I fucked? Wait, are they more screwed than we are? I put a hand on Fleming's shoulder as Ethereal oh. charges into the room. The secret exit is out that way. I will so laugh. <laughs> we'll go that way? Enough. Yes. <laughs> Works for me. Oh my god. Ethereld, you you break down the door, yeah. um, and you see him now. Now Fleming and Hawkerbright, you're kind of you say you're patting him on the shoulder, and then you told, <laughs> you told Fleming the exit this way. Is that what you're saying? okay? That's right. what I say, but you know, I'll let Fleming decide if we act on it or not. All right, so so you open up the door very, you just very give quickly. Him that gun you don't and hold and the um, <laughs> inside, I'm gonna try to. Oh my god! This is a large room, completely covered in blood. Ooh. The floor. There's a smell of copper and viscera. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to be in this room either. See you later. There's there's a coffin uh, in the corner and a very pale, comely young woman um, with very, very sharp teeth and bright red eyes is smiling. She's carrying a mace and uh, she's petting um, she's petting um, a couple of manticores uh, that are um, on her feet. Oh, I have um, them all. And she licks her, uh, she licks her teeth, uh, and you see out the corner uh, two barbed devils uh, with little horns sticking out. And says, "Well, we have been waiting for you now, haven't we?" Really, me? Yes, and let's have you roll initiative, and Hawkerbrecht and Fleming, you got to decide. Uh, you see um, your old girlfriend, Cathartic, who is a um, full-on vampire now, um, two manticores and two barbed devils uh, that you've pushed Ethreld into the door. What would you like to do? No, on the end, we're, we're probably going to have to end at nine. I have, I have kids. This, after, after y'all decide, which we're going to have to end it there. We'll pick up this. Yeah, that's week. nine central. Oh, if we're going to pick this up next time, let's go in, Fleming. Let's help him out. <laughs> Plus, I want to stick it to my girlfriend one last time. <laughs> I, I would not let him. <laughs> outshine the greatness that is Fleming the fighter. It's too late. Have, I already I said I was follow. going to stick her. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, with that, we'll have to we'll have to leave with the party split. Um, oh my god! <laughs> much longer because I'm flying the fuck out of there. Two two rim morasses, uh, are on two people, and then you have two mana cores, uh, vampire and two barb devils are facing our two brave fighters and hawk erect. So, I um, we're screwed on our side. Jesus, I think we have the easier fight now. Oh, Huckerbrecht is this woman's ex. I think we have the disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> this is so all awesome. All right, guys. So uh, so thank you all so much for, uh, for, for participating. Uh, we'll do quick final thoughts about how messed up uh, our party is and how important it is not to split the party. But, uh, but you know, that that's we, I did kind of rush things through there uh, to, to get to the decision point where we can stop. Uh, but, uh, but, but let's let's quick give uh, final thoughts, uh, Carol. Oh my god. So, Scott, um, I will show you that a convention game will not typically go this way. Um, yeah. the time to you test a game on this show, I think. Is that the unexpected and so you'll be all prepared now. Yeah. Um, I think these fights are definitely a bit better. Uh, plus I think it helps too that we have five people. I think being down that person or two people, because you're probably gonna run with what, six? Yeah. That's six. Fun. Yeah, that will act the other two people will make a pretty big difference. So these yeah. comments feel the, don't feel overpowered. It okay. only Overpowered because there's two of us, and I know how bad these are. Yeah, I, these things are, are are very very tough to fight, even as a group. But yeah, a group but they can be they can be tough. But the the action It'll, economy will probably eventually win out if you have. Yeah, you know, I think actually people. with what Blake did, oh my God, that was an incredible move. Um, that, that that's smart because it, it won't be able to track you. That's right. I, well, it's not that. It's also the smite, and he did a lot of damage to it. So now yeah. it's very strong. So, I mean, I'm still probably fucked because I've got no yeah. way to really. Uh, well, I, I might follow up. I'm not sure how I want to do it. I'm either going to try and banish both of them or I'm going to grab you and fly away to the south. That's, I mean, I'm going to start heading out the exit anyways because I can shoot now. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I think also for this, um, maybe leaving Dooney that plus. You know that plus two uh, crossbow speed. Some some Might some ranged weapons. And, okay. Yeah, switch yeah. switch yeah, to yeah. A, uh, that kind of because you've got a bunch of frontliners already. So yeah. another ranged person and rogues are great at range with the way sneak attack now works. Yeah. So I yeah I felt a lot That's better. Good. Okay, Benny, let's get your final thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree that we did need more ranged abilities because we didn't have really a full, full mage. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think. Uh, so it's good to, if, if so, the way the, the uh, party was composed, I think that's the sixth one that no one chose. Right. Oh, that's right. right. That is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there is there is a wizard that no one's chose. I, I forgot what his name is, but yeah, there's one of them there. Yeah, so but but even just with that with that caster there, I still think that yeah, it is pretty of melee heavy because Benny is built to be melee, uh, which okay. I'm not used to playing a melee cleric. Uh, okay, so that's, so that's interesting. Yeah, so I think yeah. even if you play the mage, I think still works as Dooney as as ranged. No, I agree. You 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 are a little bit lacking on the uh, on the uh, on the ranged options there. Fleming, let's get your final thoughts, Chris. Um, it was great. I did change one thing. Um, for his specialty, he needs a hand crossbow, so I switched it to that. Other than that, I think uh, everything was pretty good. It, it okay. was leveled out, uh, and of course, trying anything out with this band of Wonderful yeah. folks is uh, is going to put you to the test. Tireless supporters. <laughs> tireless supporters. That's right. That's right. Ernest, Ernie, tell me, uh, so you're 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 the charger man. You just keep charging and charging and charging. Final thoughts. Yeah, yeah I had fun. Um, I was a little annoyed that I didn't get hit uh, in that first <laughs> combat, so I, I wanted to be a little bit more impulsive from then on. I hear and, uh, you, I, and I was trying my best to hit you, but I just, I just couldn't seem to do it. I kept on rolling twos and ones. Yeah, lucky me. I'm yeah. sure. 
damn dice. Um, Kyle, yes. give me your final thoughts as the dashing and debonair. As the dashing debonair? As the dashing uh, debonair. Uh, yeah, no, I, like I said, I, I'm still picking apart Hawker Brick, and I'm kind of wondering to myself why he isn't a Valor Bard, but... Uh, he should. Yeah, can you make yeah. him a part of the for next week? You, you you can if you want. You know, you guys have access. I I think I I um I ended up buying. I I I think I have. You all have enough of the to easily create a Valor Bard out of Harkabrecht, and yeah, you you have all the Bard colleges. I think the only thing you're missing is like one sub sub water deep adventure or something. Yeah, I think that's really all Harkabrecht is kind of missing is just a little bit more oomph, and uh, especially as walking in on a one shot being able to play a high level character as opposed to a mix of two low level yeah. characters might be nicer but no that's um, fine that's fine if it, please feel free to to re-engineer them however you however you need to uh and i'll probably take that to take that into thing like i said i was this was a fairly straight port from the actual module which were the, the, the these were campaign characters at you know gen con back in 1978 yeah sure right so that was that was where the inspiration originally came from so mm -hmm. not 5e ported at all so i know you guys have made your first pass on them but if you you guys have uh, have access to them i think i have all the uh, all the material is bought so you guys can use dnd beyond to use whatever you need to do uh, and feel free to do that. Uh, I'll check it. I'll take a look at the characters we start next week. So um, join us again, please, next week as we finish this up. And hopefully, we'll have a uh, party may find a way to get together, or it'll be a TPK. One <laughs> of the two. <laughs> One of the two. Uh, but both would be fun, and will yeah. give me uh, good uh, some good experience and some insights and take. So uh, with that, guys, thank you very much. And let's give ourselves a wave for our audience. Don't forget, follow us on Twitch and follow us on follow Twitter. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, and you can buy, like, yeah, a ton of URL. Yeah, this is, like, my favorite. This is, like, you know, we, we got your back. It's great stuff. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.